Before we begin today, I need to give out a few thank yous. The nickname for my crowbat, as we already know, is Acrobat. It's Acrobat and a crowbat! And no, I'm not the only one who thought that was funny because it was suggested by quite a few of you. But, the first people to suggest it were YFYGuy on Twitter, StegenX on Twitter, and Rizkit on YouTube. So thank you so much for everyone suggesting the names for that. It was not an easy pick, but I think I chose the right one, at least for my personal tastes. Second is something that many, many, many of you pointed out. It is that on the third floor of the Galactic Building is an item ball I didn't see. I appreciate people pointing out things that I don't know, but just don't be rude about it, okay? Not to say that everyone who did was, no, most of you were fine. I just kind of didn't appreciate how a few people were kind of putting this. You can only see the top two lines of pixels on it, and it's being played on a pretty small screen. For that, we get an X special. Wow, I was kind of hoping for how some people were making a big deal out of that. It would be a little, I don't know, better. But I guess it's just kind of the way item balls are sometimes. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone who pointed these things out. On with the video. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we drove Team Galactic out of Eternus City and saved the Cycle Shop Manager's Pokemon. Not only that, but we learned some rather heartwarming secrets dealing with Rotom. This time, we're going to be heading out of Eterna, continuing on our adventure. We spent a lot of time here. There was a lot to do. And uh, before we hit the road, even though I'm on the road right now, I want to go over to this statue. I think I'm going to dub the name of this thing the Diopal Statue, just combining the two names that were engraved on it. <laughs> we can get the Draco Plate by checking right behind it. The power of defeated giants infuses this plate. This will raise the power of Dragon-type moves. We haven't seen any of those yet, so... It's not really immediately helpful to us, but I wanted to point out that it was there nonetheless. I personally didn't know about that item even being there, so thanks to those who pointed it out to me. On a similar note, if you go out to Eterna Forest near the old chateau and check right here, you will find the Insect Plate. This will raise the power of Bug-type moves. Two beings of time and space set free from the original one. I was heading off to the cycle shop, but now I get interrupted once again by the cool one. So last time you were studying mythology just for the heck of it, what are you doing now? Uncovering historical secrets because you're bored or something? <laughs> Let's see. I was looking for you. I've got something nice. I want you to have this Pokemon egg. Will you accept it? You bet I will. You will give me an egg! It needed to be said. <laughs> the Pokemon inside the egg is happy too, I'm sure of it. Keep that egg with you in your party of Pokemon. A Pokemon will hatch from it while you are traveling. So, um, eggs will take a certain number of steps walked in order to hatch. You can use the uh, Pokech app step counter to keep track of how far you've walked since getting it if you want. There is a Pokemon we'll get from this that we can't get anywhere else for the time being, but I think I will wait to go over that Pokemon whenever the time is right, whenever the egg hatches. For now, let's finally head into the cycle shop and see what we can get as our thanks. Thanks for rescuing me. This is something to show my thanks. How many times have we said thanks there? So he's given us the latest model bicycle. Well, citizens of Hard Home City, you thought you were gonna keep those snot-nosed kids out of town because they are too poor to afford bicycles and only those with bikes may be allowed into your prestigious city? Well, I got news for you. I got a freebie. I'm coming faster than you can say. Keep out. I don't know. I'm just getting really weird. This is the latest model, so I read the operating manual too. Press B button to shift up or down. In third gear, you can't go all that fast, but it's easier to control. In fourth gear, it gets harder to steer and stop, but it's r fast. Really? What do you have to say now, kid? What was Team Galactic trying to do with other people's Pokemon? Pippi! I love that, just Pippi! I have yet to acknowledge that, though, but I like Clefairy's cry just so much. It's so cute. Well, I see no better item to equip to our Y button than our bicycle. Get rid of that smelly old explorer kit. Don't need to use that anymore. We get on it, and just when you thought something was sacred and not victim to the Sinnoh slowness, this is our bicycle speed. Okay, no, not really. He was saying we could press B to go into a higher gear, and when we do, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's a little closer to the mock bike of old, but not great. Feels so good to finally have a bicycle. Through that cut, I decided to stop off at the Pokemart and stock up on some items. Got some more repels, also picked up an escape rope. Would be good to have those for the road ahead. Also, if you're wondering, two badges does not get you any new items in the Pokemart, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Let's just head out of town. Good riddance to Eterna City. Learn how to shift gears and you'll be able to ride anywhere. Learn how to shift gears and you'll be able to ride anywhere. Is there just like a mirror in the middle of this room that only I can pass through? Because that's really creepy that... Totally symmetrical, and they say the exact same thing. Let's just head out. 
Welcome to Route 206, otherwise known as... Not a turn of city. <laughs> wow, um, Cycling Road. Yeah, every Pokemon game, well, most Pokemon games have one of these. And, well, this one appears really early. You're gonna always be moved downward because the uh, road is sloped downward and we're on a bicycle. You can't get off your bike here, though. Uh, what I want to do, though, is I want to battle this first guy that we see right here on the road. Yo, Cycling and Pokemon, which do you prefer? Why not do both at the same time? Yeah, making creatures fight while on bikes, not motorbikes. Cyclist Axel right here is our first trainer of interest in quite a while. He has a Pikachu on his team. Of all the Pokemon to not be part of any required battle in the entire game, Pikachu. Yeah, you could possibly not see this, so you want to fight him. I think I'll just stick Acrobat out here. I know that it's weak to electric, but... Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> um, oh, it flinched. Am I still faster than it? Oh, no. I was, I was hoping that Crobat's crazy speed was going to make it even faster, even though it was paralyzed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 keep hitting me with slam. Now we'll take you out. <laughs> wow, that could have gone a lot smoother than it did. I probably should have had Supernova out in the lead there, but it just didn't work out for me. Hey, not bad, you. Yeah, not so bad yourself. You're multitasking, riding a bike while playing Pokemon. Uh, that actually sounds quite dangerous, kids. Don't do that. Well, since Crobat is paralyzed, I thought it would be nice if I did some, oh, let's be honest, shameless bragging. Look at the fruits of my efforts! Yeah! I am set for pretty much the rest of our adventure in the way of status healing items. I don't need... I don't need to check the tag of the berry, no. I don't need to worry about status conditions or any of that crap. I am good. This is awesome. It feels so good, though, just the fact that we are not that far into our journey, and already you can just kind of see how much you can get of a return from just farming berries. It's awesome, I love doing that. I still can't believe in my Emerald Let's Play, I didn't do that. I don't need to fight you for anything. Bodhi grew to level 25 from that battle. And Supernova did not grow to any sort of new level, unfortunately for me. Let's continue on the- I really gotta learn to shut up and stop jinxing things. <laughs> There it is, Supernova grew to level 20. Maybe now I'll be able to go, I would say two steps, but I'm on a bicycle. I guess it would be two wheel revolutions without running into a trainer. That sounds unnecessarily, like, really dramatic when I say it like that. Well, that is Cycling Road. Uh, what do you have to say? What's a bicycle without this? You gotta have a flag, it's a Pokemon accessory. Having a flag on a bike is pretty darn cool. So you can use that to dress up Pokemon. It'll go in your fashion case. Is this also, uh, wow. Um, I'm imagining like a dystopian future where there's like mindless drones working these gate buildings or something. We are on Route 206 yet again. Uh, I want to get this raspberry, doesn't really do anything for us right now, but I might as well pluck it. I might as well kill this tree. It's there for me to kill, right? I should do, no, okay, that's sounding really bad. Uh, no, I don't, I don't want to plant any berries on screen, please. We have cut, we can go through here and explore another part of Route 206 that actually has some grass on it with some encounters. But for now, I think I want to skip ahead of that to show that down here, this should look familiar to you. It connects to Orberg City. If you want to go back up, you need to have your bike in the highest gear and move at top speed up that slope. Just like that guy was telling to us when he was sh shamelessly showing off. We can go to the Orberg Mining Museum now. We can talk to this guy that I wanted us to remember for later. I study fossils, me, right here and now. You have fossil for me, yes? Shall I turn it into Pokemon? Okay, I was actually skipping a few connecting words there. Uh, yeah, you go outside, yes, please. Now, that time, time alone is what I need, now! Dropped off our uh, skull fossil with him. We just need to go outside. Listen for some screaming on the inside. I didn't hear any, but hopefully that's a good sign for him treating our fossil well. Hello, hello, how are you? I study Pokemon fossils, meet right here and now. You were gone too long, you kept us waiting, unacceptable. Here, this is your Kratidos, you be good to it, okay? I've already gone over the fossil Pokemon when we explored Sinnoh Underground, so if you want my opinions on those, you can of course go there. I am not planning to use Cranidos on my team, but I did just want to show that this is where you resurrect fossils and that you can do that right here and now. No having to get it before you even have two badges and waiting until Cinnabar Island or any of that crap. Uh, also, while we're here in Orberg, there was one other thing that I wanted to do while we're revisiting it. Let me get on my bike here. That is that some of you were informing me that down in the comments that if I check this, yes, we can get a heart scale. I already went over that and if I check this pile of coal in a few other places, I think it was one of the, yes, a pearl. 
It's a useful item for selling. Not as good as the big pearl that we got in Orberg Gate, but still something very worthwhile. Yeah, I didn't know either of those items were there. So once again, I know where a lot of hidden items are, but I'm obviously not going to know every one of them. So I do appreciate people pointing those out to me, just so long as you're not rude about it or anything. In addition, yeah, we just have so many places to backtrack to now that we have that connecting route and can finally go just about everywhere we want. I, wow, I really need to um, move my repels up near the top. That is unacceptably bad. Luckily, it moves a lot faster whenever you're uh, using select to move an item. Want to use a repel? If you remember, in Orberg Gate, there was an area that we couldn't access without a bicycle. Now we can. Derpidius, do the honors. Use your rock smash. Love that name, though, Derpidius. <laughs> So fun to say. Let's get in here. Music is oddly creepy, actually. I never really realized just how creepy this place is for it just being such a normal area that doesn't really have anything to it. Uh, is there... Do I really need to... Okay, no, I guess I don't need to really smash all three of them. I guess I can just do this one. And now, after all that, we can now do that. You can hop over that. I keep saying that. You can hop over those rocks with these other rocks that are coincidentally in the shape of ramps how convenient, and get TM31 Brick Break. This is an incredible fighting type move, one of the best out there. It'll smash through light screen and reflect if you want to get rid of those buffs if your opponent uses them, so it is useful for more than just doing damage, but in the way of damage, it is very, very respectable. Very good. Once again, I don't think I'll be using that TM. I do want to be a little bit sparing with limited TMs in this game, so yeah, I won't be doing that. All there was for us down here. I think I'm just going to meet you guys back in Orberg City now. Look into his eyes. He knows I'm watching him. Whoa! Never mind what I said. I'm going to meet you back in Jubilife TV. I decided to play the lottery since we were in the area, and I won. ID number of your team is Der... <laughs> Derpity is coming through in the clutch. Wow! Last digit match so you can win fourth prize. How fitting that Bidoof wins fourth prize. I get an Ultra Ball! That has double the catch rate of a regular Pokeball. I suppose now would be just as good a time as any to show what the prizes are on screen in case you do win this. I was just gonna wait for that, but wow! Wasn't expecting to do that. Now let's go back to Orberg. I lied again. I didn't meet you guys back in Orberg City. I decided to go for Route 207 to save us a little bit of time. What I want to do is go What I want to do is go north to Route 206 again, cut down these trees. Thank you, Derpidius, once again. And I just want to explore the area around here. There's some grass that lets us get some encounters we couldn't get otherwise, and this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while now. I gotta say, the roots of Sinnoh are just so interesting compared to roots in previous Pokemon games. Like we had a cycling road, and it's above the route that we were about to go explore. Yeah, there was a cycling road that was above a route in Ruby and Sapphire, but here it's a lot more dynamic, taking advantage of the fact that the areas are three-dimensional. You get to see items below you, there's a lot of curiosity, there's grass below you, and it shows you how the route is partially laid out before you go there. It's just really neat to me. But uh, enough gushing. There are not two, but three new encounters here, I'll explain later and I'd like to go over them now. First one's really simple. Cricketune is now catchable in the wild. If you wanted to raise a Cricketot without, well, raising a Cricketot, you can now catch Cricketune in the wild and it has access to Fury Cutter, making it a lot more viable than its pre-evolution. Okay, fine, I'll do the thing. Da -da 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 -da, whoop! If you've never played this game before, I promise it'll make sense later on. Second is Gligar. This one struggled to stand out a lot historically. It had a good type with only two weaknesses and some really solid defense, but it just didn't learn many good moves and it could have done with an evolution. Gen 4 delivered. It is very much worth considering now due to its evolution that can take hits and dish out huge amounts of damage. Plus, it got so many new moves such as U-Turn, Night Slash, and quite frankly, more TMs being compatible than it knows what to do with giving it amazing type coverage. Just make sure that you evolve it by level 31, because you'll miss out on Night Slash if you don't. Also, the Razor Fang that it needs for evolution is accessible during the main story, but it's a hidden item. I'll be showing where it is when the time comes, but just know that it's not easily found. Other than how it does in battle, this Pokemon is complete nonsense. How does it fly being three feet tall and weighing that darn much? What? Last up, and only in Diamond version, is Stunky, 
With a poison dark type, it resists so many things, is immune to psychic, and only weak to ground. True to its evolution's name, it is a tank through and through. The biggest problem with Stunky, and I don't mean it's horrible gas, seriously, you don't want the ability stench you want aftermath, is that it doesn't really get good moves until it gets up there in the levels. You can catch it in later areas, once again only in Diamond, and its evolution is obtainable in the wild later on, but just be forewarned on that, I'm not sure I'd recommend catching it here. One thing that was kind of funny to me was that while we were going over Gligar, I didn't want to interrupt myself, but I got a super repel from an item ball right when I used a regular repel, so I got some net gain out of the steps that I'm keeping Pokemon away from. It was just really good timing. Uh, I guess while we're fighting this Onix, I could mention that some of you have told me that in damage calculations, there's very few situations in which it's more viable for Grodel to use Absorb than Razor Leaf, unless I need to recover health, so... I'm thankful for that, it's just that I was using it whenever the enemy had low special defense, assuming that it was the better option. And wow, that battle ended a lot quicker than I thought it would. I, I guess whenever you're fighting in Gen 4, it just feels like battles are going to take a long time, even when they're not. Let's beat that. Your power startles me! Hopefully it doesn't startle you so much that you go bug-eyed before I walk two steps north of you. That taken care of, there is another item over this way, a Poison Barb. This will raise the power of Poison-type moves. I already have an item that does this, and I really don't need it for now. So, kind of going more into how Sinnoh's roots are just so interesting in their design. There is a cave entrance right there, sure. If I were to go in there, excuse me, I would really like to keep my repels up, thank you. As I was saying... This is another prime reason why I like the roots in Sinnoh just so, so much. We have a cave entrance up there, sure. But if we go under Cycling Road, move a little bit to the left, press up, left, up, left, up, left, up, eventually we will find a secret cave entrance. We are just ending these videos on really high notes lately because this is another one of my favorite secrets in all of Pokemon. My repel's wearing off whenever I'm about to gush, though, is not one of my favorite things in Pokemon, though. In Diamond and Pearl, there would be some boulders here you could not move aside until later. They are gone in Platinum, allowing you to go into this basement. There are some amazing items down here that are very worth your time. It is clear they intended for you to get them a lot later in the game, but because we're Platinum players, we can access this a lot earlier. Here is, again, Repels, Max Ether. That will restore all PP to all your moves one time. Very good item. Can't buy that in stores. But even more so than those items is a new encounter you can find on this basement floor. Gibble. I've been waiting to talk about this one. Only in Platinum, you can obtain Gibble at this point. This is our first Dragon-type Pokemon, and what a wonder it is. Unlike most Dragon Pokemon, it evolves very soon after it's caught, and because of that, you won't have to worry about it falling behind the rest of your team. It has a fantastic type, does huge amounts of damage even from the start, and will pretty much never have a shortage of powerful moves coming in for it to learn. In short, this was banned in tournaments for a reason. You will not be disappointed if you go for it. What you want to do on this part is not go at full speed just to get a short hop over it that'll let you get into this passage. As you can see, I struggled a lot. What? What? Are you kidding me? Like, already? I thought that was going to be like two or three episodes from now. I didn't think that it would hatch that fast. I mean, I've been doing a little bit of exploring this video, but damn, well, I guess no time like the present to go over Togepi. This really is the episode of Pokemon that are like, hey, if you were playing Diamond and Pearl, it'd be like another 20 hours until you catch me, but nope, you're playing Platinum, so you can get me right now. That's what Togepi is. This egg is the only way to obtain it during the main story. It's going to be a rough road raising it. Baby Pokemon hatched from eggs are only level 1 in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum as opposed to level 5 in previous games. It gets no attacking moves for a long, long time. It doesn't get much better in the way of level up moves until it evolves when that is rough because it's a happiness evolution. If you can tough through all that, Togekiss is a beast! has great defenses, great special attack, and like any good normal type, learns many, many great moves. Because of the rich move pool, I think Serene Grace is the better of its two abilities. And I swear, if it's not an egg hatching, it's that Repel's Effect wore off popping up every 10 seconds, killing the momentum of my bike riding, making it so I can't get over those jumps. Nothing does it. 
Well, while going through there, I got a rare candy and a grip claw. But up here is the piece de resistance! TM26 Earthquake! Between Gibble, um, the rare candy that you can get here, this everything! It is so worth your time to go into this cave. It is an incredibly worthwhile distraction. Earthquake is a physical ground type move. Does 100 power, has 100% accuracy. Seriously, everyone knows how great Earthquake is. Who doesn't? It is a move that is, well, it's so good that back in these days when TMs were single use, people would do entire playthroughs just to get one of those items. Playing two badges into Diamond Pearl Platinum to get an Earthquake TM, that was worth it back in the day. You did that stuff back then. Kids of today don't know the appreciation you would get from accomplishing such a feat. Anyway, I'm just gonna use my escape rope, get out of there, back to my invisible cave entrance, and I think from there, we're gonna call it a day. We moved on from Eterna City, got through Cycling Road, backtracked to some past areas, got some really, really incredible items that you really don't want to miss, explored a new area, checked out some fun new encounters, and also I had my egg hatch in record time, yeah. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're gonna see what this other cave has to offer for us since we only explored a hidden one, not that lame, not hidden one. See you guys then.